Keep my eyes wide open all the time. I keep the ends out for the tide that finds because you're mine. Continuing here, you know, I don't believe I am a particularly smart guy, you know, no more so than anybody else, which is really uh, pretty smart. I mean, we have the potential to be very intelligent beings, okay, and, uh, and actually it's really unlimited. So I guess I am pretty smart, but, you know, it's only because God inspires you to seek to be really smart, because a lot of it has to do with wisdom. And I'm not smart about everything. I mean, I'm not smart about smoking cigarettes, probably. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things, one of those methods of slashing my wrists, metaphorically speaking, that I find uh, helps me to contend and cope with this mad, 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 mad world. And FYI, plenty of smokers outlive non-smokers. Okay, don't ask me for all the answers, but I know there's a lot of mind over matter involved and nutrition and and uh, medicinal herbal remedies and foods that people can take to mitigate their, minimize their, um, you know, their uh, being subject to various diseases. So, you know, maybe that's part of it. But the mind over matter thing indeed is powerful. You know, the power of prayer and all this stuff. But I don't, I, I believe that we all have great potential to be super intelligent beings and to figure this stuff out. So, you know, anybody that, you know, wants to bandy this term socialist around because of my beliefs, okay? Remember, my beliefs are the same as Martin Luther King Jr.'s beliefs. This basic guaranteed income, okay? Just to make sure that we keep these money masters of misery in their place, in check, and remind them whose planet this is, and that we all have an inherent God-given right, entitlement. An entitlement is a right. A right is an entitlement. So anybody that's triggered by that term entitled, you know, uh, well, you know, think differently. If the people in 2008, those banks are criminals, okay, those people are the ones. If you want to, you know, talk entitlement, let's talk that entitlement. And talk about what America would be, look like today if JFK had gotten his way. If the banking bailout didn't take place of 08, okay, it'd be a lot different. Your cost of housing and cost of living tax would be much lower. Do you understand? That'd be much better. That'd be much freer. There'd be a hell of a lot less homelessness out there. Do you understand? People that can't afford housing. We're spending $50 billion a year, folks. So you are subsidizing the poor massively. So I want to talk for a minute about the benefits of eliminating desperate, extreme poverty, abject, utter poverty for society. Eliminate it completely. What the perks, what the benefits would be. They'd be so far-reaching, I can only touch on a few glaring ones. All these haters of abortion, all these conservatives that hate abortion. Good, I hate abortion. Who doesn't hate abortion? It's horrible. Uh, so all that, you, you pretty much, all these women would feel secure all of a sudden, financially, economically secure, monetarily secure. They know that society is going to look after them like one big family. Okay, what we're supposed to, America, to set an example for the world, Christians and all this stuff. You call yourself Christian? Yes, that's definitely the way you should look at this thing. One big, fat, happy family is what we're shooting for here. Okay, that means everybody's got to be happy in the family or the whole family is going to suffer to some degree through osmosis. So understand the nuts and bolts, the logic, the two plus two, what I'm saying here. Okay, so so there's one perk. Uh, crime. Crime would plummet. Absolutely. Homicides. We're talking about serious crimes out there. Prostitution. Overnight. Child pedophilia. There's money involved in this. Do you understand? All this stuff. You, can you believe it? I mean, who would even think about that? That would be almost negated completely, except for a few really freaky pervs out there who need to be behind bars for sure. Um, let's see, what else are we talking about here? Well, the welfare industrial complex could shut down. We wouldn't need it if everybody was guaranteed automatically that they were going to receive a uh, minimum guaranteed income. Some people say automatic. Oh, you expect the government to fix it? Well, the government to fix things. Well, no, I expect the government to not, not only allow, but to uh, facilitate, okay, the destruction of... Okay, the theft of the wealth of my nation through currency debasement, through by way of cost of living 
tax inflation, okay, which what they did and what they do. So if you think it's okay, you want to bitch and moan about expecting the government to do stuff, well, what I expect them not to do okay, is to make things worse, is what this $50 billion a year poured into subsidizing housing to make it affordable for poor people, okay, uh, and it just makes the problem 10 times worse, exponentially worse. Yeah, I'm opposed to that kind of crap. So, yeah, you want to talk about what the government's supposed to do and not do, let's talk about what it should not do, okay? It should protect capitalism, and that sure as crap is not protecting capitalism by bailing out the criminals in 08, okay? So, yes, your housing costs would be dramatically lower if that wasn't allowed to take place. Okay, instead of uh, making the banksters whole, if they had made the homeowners whole, okay, things would look a hell of a lot different in America right now. In California, for sure, particularly, since we're way ahead of the curve in this high, high cost of uh, living tax, okay? Let's see what else. They couldn't get these dubious wars started. That's for damn sure. A guy will pay to go kick a guy like Hitler's ass, but we don't want to get involved in anything sketchy because this has life and limb, and we're involved. So I'm not a good. You you chew on that for ruminate on that just for a while. How serious this is. This is life and death. This is serious stuff. Children die in wars. Innocent people die in wars. Do you understand the implications of a dubious war, one that's not justified? Like everybody says, we should not have gone into Iraq now, but at the time, there was no stopping this beast, this monster, from going to battle and going to war and believing it's completely justified that Hussein was some horrible criminal with weapons of mass destruction. Turns out he didn't have any. And then Libya with Gaddafi and all this crap. Now they want to do it in Syria, okay? What the hell happened in Egypt and all over the freaking place, man? I mean, it's sickening to me. Afghanistan, just all over the place. Okay, we got no business being in there doing this stuff. Okay, I remember when all this stuff started. You just started hearing about the Taliban and how they captured a pump, a couple of Bible thumping. Uh, uh, what do they call them? They got a term for them. It's illegal to um, you know promote the Bible in their land, but. Um, proselytites I guess they go no proselytizing <sighs> but uh, you know we're going back decades you know when that first you know the first hints that there was going to be trouble and we were going to have to go in like some police action how it all starts so we just got to you know make sure that the bible is able to go out into these lands like Afghanistan and uh we got to uh, get this Taliban in check. And, yeah, I'm not defending any of these people. A lot of them are freaky nuts, and a lot of them are into pedophilia. I mean, look, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to defend anybody that's evil and doing, you know, things, bad things to children that hurts them physically, psychologically speaking. And so I think some of these people are engaged in that. So in some sense, I'm glad that, you know, we lay down the law sometimes in some areas, I admit. Uh, but, you know, we get involved in these dubious wars, man, and it just never ends. So that's another one of the perks I'm talking about with the basic guaranteed income and just ending extreme desperate poverty in America and setting the right example for Latin American nations, namely Mexico, our neighbor to the south here. Okay. And we open tri trade with China. How great. They well, why aren't we opening You know, with Mexico? Their prices are commensurate with China's. It's dirt cheap to live in Mexico, right? Their pesos and all this, they're all poor. I mean... You know, no, they don't want to do it because then they wouldn't have that huge pool of desperate people, you know, migrating north. You understand? They, these people are so, so diabolical, okay? They're very cunning and crafty. They deliberate and they think things through. They know what they're doing. Remember, they, they're, it's like the world is their chessboard and they're just these master controllers manipulating us as minions and brute beasts, automatons at their will. And when we don't behave, they just, you know, make America lives worse. When, and they just want to push the envelope and kick the can as far as they can. But they're going to lose. They're a defeated foe. So the good news is, and, and the, you know, the, the positive and the, uh, the um, uh, theme here is that the good guy has won already. Jesus won on the cross. He paid the price for our sins. Okay? He paid the ransom. And so 
the evildoers are defeated. And their master has been defeated. But they are not going to relent. They're going to let you continue to think that they're going to somehow prevail in this battle. Okay, But they can't. Okay, And I just like to reaffirm that with not only the world, but with myself. I've got to know that because these people are freaky and scary. And they're not going to give up without a fight. They've decided it's a fight to the finish. These people would be utterly miserable if, when, when God's will is installed upon the earth. Okay, when there is no form of money, there's no form, there's no method to oppress others. There's no advantage disadvantage paradigm. There's no one upmanship with these people. There's no being elitist in that world. And they would be utterly miserable. So, what are you supposed to, what's God supposed to do? Forever bear with these people? You say, well, what is God some big meanie? He's going to send these people to hell? Well, he's going to separate them. They'd be in hell if they're all together, all those that are elitist in their mind and heart and spirit. Okay, that believe even a little inequality is okay. You're all going to the same place, the de same destination. God knows your heart and mind. He knows what you really believe deep down inside. So there's no running. When we stand before God and we give account on the day of reckoning, okay, the judgment day, then we're going to have to explain ourselves, explain our thinking, explain our justification. Okay, why didn't we listen to people that were making sense, people like myself? I told you, this is the way, man. We've got to get ourselves out from under the thumb of these evildoers, I'm telling you. You know, agree to a basic income. Agree to ending desperation out there. Remember, it's you're doing it for Jesus, who said he is the least of men. He said he is the least. So next time you see a homeless person, I hope you see the face of Christ. Do you understand? So give generously if you can afford to. Why not? Show them some love in that manner. Show them that, look, there's hope. Yeah, maybe this will give them be the strength they need to strengthen that weak link in the chain of humanity. You might be the one that does it, okay, just by being nice. Or a lot of people start being nice to them. They say, you know what, I think I'm going to go shave. I think I'm going to go, you know, find some threads and try to get a job and try to, you know, try, 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 at least try. Because people have shown me love and I want to show some love back. And when people are in their right mind, you can't stop them from serving. It's like me. You can trust me. Try me. Test me. Prove me wrong. Okay, but I'm still going to serve. Wild horses couldn't drag me away from serving. People understand that. You have a godly instinct to want to serve, to not be a self-serving, decadent, lazy pissant. You've got to be appreciated. You've got to utilize your talent so people want to give. They just want to be appreciated for giving. You understand? And they're not in this paradigm. You're not. You know, these minimum wage workers, all these unsung heroes that are being oppressed and have to go on welfare and lose their dignity, and they're holding down a full-time job trying to take care of a family, and it just gets harder and harder to crack the nut, to get the meat out of there, to survive, and it's impossible to reach the bar of middle-class home ownership, seemingly. I mean, this is horrendous, and people think, oh, but America, why does everybody want to come here? Well, it is still the best house in a bad neighborhood, perhaps. But again, this is by design. This is what these evildoers I talked about earlier that are manipulating the masses, the world masses, that's what they've done on purpose. They know what they're doing. I'm telling you, they know what they're doing. Okay, I'm, I, I, these people, as sure as the day is long, these people know what the hell they're doing. They've wrecked it up all over the world. So yeah, there's no place to run. America's the best house in bad neighborhoods. So that's why. But as far as how far we've fallen, good God almighty. How much further can we fall? I've watched Zimbabwe in slow motion my whole stinking life. How is this better? It's like a band-aid being slowed up, being pulled off excruciatingly slow. It's like the pain just won't stop and it just seems to get worse and worse and worse. Yeah, rip it, instead of ripping it off, like in 2008 we had an opportunity. You know, if JFK had gotten his way, we had an opportunity. But it has to be on God's timetable. This is the problem here. This is the obstacle Okay, to me, for, for me to be a complete optimist to say things are turning around, or the worm has turned, the ship has turned, and the tide has changed, and everything's getting better. I don't think it's stopped yet. As long as your cost of living tax keeps going up, the tide has not changed, folks. It hasn't turned. As long as people are still dying out on the street from desperate poverty, unnecessary human suffering, your fellow human being, the tide hasn't changed. The ship has not turned. The worm has not turned. Okay. That's it. That's your litmus test. That's the evidence. 
that's the gauge, the metric that you should use that, you know, that, hey, hey, things have turned around. So that's what's barring me from being totally optimistic that things have changed. So I know we're going to hit some kind of wall. I know. So, yes, I am. I'm kind of tortured. Uh, I like God. I'm trying to wish, you know, none to perish, all to come to repentance. I'm not going to delight in the destruction of the wicked. But I know something really bad karma is going to come upon the evildoers, man. It has to. Their days are numbered, man. Their, their ticket's almost punched. It's got to be, man. These people have gotten away with so much for so long, okay? So anyhow, back to this basic income. Just imagine all those jobs that would disappear. So people say, well, how is that positive to have a basic guaranteed income when all those jobs would disappear that revolve around the problems continuing? I think, how could it not be? So people's time is freed up. What am I saying? Well, you got to find something to do with your time. time. I mean, society only needs you five hours a week because you build houses and everybody wants to start, everybody wants to say, I helped build that house and uh, point at it and say, yeah, yeah, son, daughter, you know, this is what I did. You know, I helped build this.